This is Physical Science 2, Chapter 8, Part 2 on the Solar System. In this portion of the video lecture, we will be discussing the possibility of life on other planets. Well, the big question that astronomers tried to answer is, is there life on other planets? Is Earth that unique that uh, we are the only thing out there that has not just life, but intelligent life on it as well? Uh, if you think about this planet, just Earth, there is a huge variety of living things on this planet. They range from the largest blue whale all the way to the teeniest of tiniest of bacterium and everything in between. If you never lived on planet Earth and visited here, there would be an absolute smorgasbord of different shapes and colors and sizes and actions of living things, it would probably boggle your little alien mind. So it's not too far-fetched to believe that on some other planet somewhere, there is life as well. Don't forget, not just animals, but plant life too. Uh, so there could be places other uh, in our, our galaxy or even in the universe that have life that can be found either on its surface, uh, in its atmosphere, or in its water, or underground. <clears throat> when we think of very early, early, early Earth, uh, and the similarities to that versus other planets outside of our solar system, there may be not so nice conditions uh, on other planets outside of our solar system, on those extrasolar planets. Here on Earth, we have some pretty extreme uh, environments. Uh, the research submarine uh, was an unmanned submarine. His name was Elvin. Uh, he has a little camera. But uh, in the uh, mid-80s, uh, Elvin was sent down to the deep, dark, down depths of the ocean where we assumed that uh, there was very little, if any, life down there at all. However, Elvin found these... Uh, very interesting and, and variety of life forms while exploring the ocean floor where there is no sunlight that reaches. Previously to this, it was believed that all life on Earth depends on sunlight because sunlight provides plants with the energy they need to make their own food. Herbivores eat the plants, carnivores eat the herbivores, omnivores eat the carnivores and the herbivores. So the whole food web and chain system on the surface of the earth does depend on the sun. But there are living organisms that reside where there is no sunlight. So they do what's called chemosynthesizing. There are little bacteriums down uh, near what we call hydrothermal vents, um, or sometimes they're called black smoker communities. And these bacteria feed off of the chemicals that tube worms um, will filter through uh, their, their gills, and <clears throat> they provide energy <clears throat> and food for the food chain down where there is no sunlight. So this environment is very hot and very toxic. Not many, many things can live in these types of areas. But then, again, it's logical to assume that if we have these crazy extreme environments here on Earth, if there were crazy extreme environments on other extrasolar planets, there may be life that resides there. Now, generally, the, the question between life is, do we search for life on other planets or do we search for intelligent life? When we talk about any life on anything anywhere uh, outside of Earth, we call that extraterrestrial life. Uh, extra meaning outside, and terra, remember, referring to Earth. So this would be life on other worlds. Uh, now, there's a lot of misconceptions, you know, about aliens and what they would be like. Of course, there is the <clears throat> uh, stereotypical version of the E.T. alien. We also have the Gray Man alien, uh, the alien from the movie series uh, Alien, which was actually based on a real living creature that lives deep down dark in the ocean. Within our own solar system, we try to look for evidence of life on other planets or moons that are closest to us. Um, we've sent many space probes to Mars, um, including uh, flyby types of satellite probes, as well as the Mars rover and Curiosity that continuously takes pictures of the surface. 
Uh, from what we get from aerial views, uh, scientists do believe that there once was water on Mars and there possibly still could be liquid water on Mars. We see a lot of shots like this from the Mars surface. And as you can see, if you were to get a map of the Earth out and dried out river basins would look very similar to the forms that you see here. Now, astronomers predict that uh, there was kind of one very large ocean on uh, liquid water. On the top uh, north side of Mars and on the south pole of Mars, there was a little more kind of an icy situation. But as time went on, um, Mars lost its most of its liquid water. Um, Mars has a very thin, poor atmosphere. Uh, lots of the solar rays uh, and the radiation that the sun spits out tend to evaporate that water off the surface. Also, the fact that it is fairly cold on the surface of Mars. Um, so research is still being done as to if there uh, is liquid water still present on Mars. And if there was, if we were to possibly someday move to Mars to make it uh, Earth 2.0, if you will, uh, if that would be enough to supply um, people to live on Mars. Europa is a moon of Jupiter. Uh, Europa is a, a moon <clears throat> that uh, is kind of like a big giant ice ball with a liquidy center in the middle, as far as we can tell from our satellite drive-bys. Um, this ocean, if Europa has it, would have more water than two times all of the water in Earth's oceans combined. We know that scientifically speaking, liquid water is necessary for life to evolve. So if there's liquid water on Europa, perhaps in this under ice ocean, there could be living things. Titan is a moon of Saturn. And from what we have seen from satellite uh, information is that there is the presence of what we call hydrocarbons on the surface of Titan. A hydrocarbon is a biological molecule. Hydrocarbons are found in sugars and fats and uh, a lot of things that make up life tissue. And so perhaps if we have the presence of these things on the surface, that may indicate that there either is life on the surface of Titan, or there once was uh, at some point. So these types of planets and moons are important to exobiologists. Uh, exobiologists study extraterrestrial life. Um, so they try to figure out how and if it is possible for life to form and thrive and where that life may be uh, in our solar system or perhaps outside of our solar system. This has been Physical Science 2, Chapter 8, Part 2 on the Solar System.